Okay, so today I'm just going to do a simple exercise how to find something in the library. And this is a library that's not yours, but you should be able to get to any library in the world and find out how they work. Uh, my mission, I used many, many, many years ago a book on interpreting or translation, I can't remember what, by a guy called Brislin. And I'm interested in ideas he gave about how to train interpreters. So um, I'm going to see if I can find that book. First stop, the catalogue of the library, which of course is online. Okay, so now we're going to look for this guy. I'll get into the library. There we are, library catalogue. Keyword, I'll look for the author because that's the only thing I know about this book. Brislin, there he is. See what happens. Okay, we've got cross cultural encounters, learning, uh, culture, learning, culture, training, training, intellectual, practical guide, structured experiences. Okay, here we got translation. So, this is his book on translation. I can go in there and look at what they've got about it. 1976 is pretty old, and that's the number. That's the number I'm going to use while I look for it. Well, I'm there, though. I'm really looking for ideas for uh, training interpreters, things I can use in the classroom. So he's done a lot of other stuff that might be of even more interest to me, uh, particularly this manual of structured experiences, etc. Uh, I think I will take a look at that one as well. So I get that call number as well, I got that, and go and look perhaps for those two books. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is the library. We've just got to get in there and uh, and find that book. Okay, so here we are. I can't make any sound. Looking for peas. Peas in a pod. Circulating collection peas. Right. Yeah, they're all peas. Finding P three oh seven. Three oh six. Looks good. Let's go around. P three oh six already. This is all of all the translation stuff. Oh my gosh. It's down the bottom here. 306, let's see what we've got. Um, 306T. Okay, so we're going to get T. I don't know why T, because his name's not T, but our translation. 306T67, no, 306T68, no, 306T7. That's it. Take a look. Yep, got him. That's my book. What's interesting is if you look around, there's a lot of other stuff on translation there that could be of interest. Translation in practice, for example. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking for something with ideas about teaching. So while I'm here, I'll take a look around and see if there's anything else of real interest. So just in case it's not clear how the numbers are working, you've got to go in parts. So that number there was P. I find the P's, okay, in an alphabetical order I get to the P's. Then 306 is a subject number. So I look for all the 306's, they'll be in one go. Then I go through alphabetical order until I get to the T's, and then I go through numerical order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, where the one before this, if you remember, was something like T687. So I'm not reading it as 7, or the other one was not 600. I've got to read them each one as a decimal place. So 687, then 7, after that might come 712, or something like that. Uh, similarly, here's another one by Bristland. I'd have to find the HMs, then I find the 134s together, then I go through alphabetical order until I get to M. Then under the M's, I look for 35. There's going to be a lot of things here. And here, it's classified in terms of the year of publication. So I go through numerical order by year, 
1986. Okay, this is the basic Dewey decimal system. You've got to remember that each unit here has its own order. You'll make sense of it with a bit of practice.